What is up, Ore Warriors, and welcome back to another video and another vlog. Um, I was up early this morning, so I thought I may as well go on down to the beach, do some reading. By the way, this is what I'm reading at the moment. It's a, a business-related book. Usually I would read something more health philosophy-related, but this is it's an interesting one. We got some coffee, had the sunrise, and of course I'm gonna do a sea swim. Definitely not how uh, I start every day as much as I would like it to be, but uh, I try to swim at least once a week kind of throughout the year, so even in winter, in the sea, just for that cold exposure, that goodness. And it's just a nice challenge. Um, speaking of which, I want to kind of share with you uh, the latest challenge that I think I'm going to start working on. Now, if you've been following me for a while, following the training that I've been doing, you'll know that I'm kind of obsessed with handstands. I've been doing a lot of handstands lately and things have been going well. I've got the one-arm handstands certainly becoming more consistent. However, it has been a very grindy two and a half years and now it has become somewhat consistent. I'm kind of itching to work on some new goals. It's not that I'm done with handstands. I still love doing them. I still love training. I'm still going to be committing a lot of time to them. It's just that sometimes it's useful to have something a little bit fresh to focus on laying out a plan, thinking about new things to work towards. It's exciting in its own right, so I'm looking forward to kind of laying down that path, almost starting from the beginning in some aspects again, and working up to it. And that is just actually building more strength in some lower body weighted lifts. So if you'd have watched that 500K eight year transformation special, you'd have seen that I started like my training journey with, you know, probably as a lot of people have done that bodybuilding, powerlifting, weightlifting background. And I did enjoy lifting weights and building strength there. And I made some okay progress. I had, you know, a 200 kg deadlift and other things. But when I moved to bodyweight training, I kind of just left that behind. It wasn't my focus anymore. I was more interested in building flexibility, although I did still train weight training for the legs in some form or another. It was usually a lot lighter and it wasn't particularly focused or consistent. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm basically starting from zero again, which although a little bit depressing, is also very exciting. So since over the years, it's taken me four or five years to build up towards those mobility goals, like the middle split, the front split, the pancake, everything else like that, I thought it would be fun to now maintain that, keep that going, if anything, make that better as well, but also build on the strength side of things. Now I have done this in the past before, I've done like a stronger mobile series, um, so you can, I will link that down below, it was a couple of years ago now, but that was really the last time I properly lifted heavy. So. Um, I'm going to take you back to last week in London where I was kind of explaining my plan of how to become strong as well as flexible. Suffering. Right, I'm back in London, as you probably can tell, at Move Hackney with my man Erdy, learning to human. Um, today we're going to be hitting up another leg session, just like before. Uh, this time we're going to be pushing, or I'm going to be pushing the one RM a little bit more so we can see kind of how much we lift. Uh, but I also want to just talk about how to balance strength and flexibility, or can you be strong and flexible all at the same time, and how you might go about doing that, or my current take on that anyway. But before we jump into the weightlifting, stretching side of things, of course, we're gonna start off with a little bit of handstands. Uh, the main reason I wanted to show some handstands is that usually I would do stretching during my handstand session. So I do some straddles, some pancake, things to help with flexibility for doing handstands. But because I'm doing it for lower body training, I don't do any stretching. The issue with doing passive stretching, especially pre-training, can inhibit that force reduction. You kind of get a bit of a neurological shutdown towards those muscles you're stretching. So we don't want that. Some dynamic stretching though is fine, like if you need to develop range of motion or you need to increase your range of motion a little bit before the session, you know, if you have tight ankles, tight hips, and releasing that, opening that up, helps you get deeper into your squat or a better position, 
so that you can generate more force. Right, so uh, first working set done. Um, I use my warmth, I do good mornings, a little bit of squat stuff, and then just like a set of five, set of one or two, and I jump into my working sets. Today, I'm gonna do three, two, one, so wave loading. So you kinda go heavy, 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 and then back off and repeat. If you watched the last lower body weight training video, I was doing some of my deadlifts, but I was doing high reps, low rest prep work. This time round, we're doing still CMOs, but I'm kind of working towards close to one RM, so not absolute max, one rep max. I'm gonna do like kind of a training six set sort of one rep max. So it'd be a nice way to find kind of the starting point where my strength is at, and then hopefully work towards that 200 kilo end goal. First set of one, 165, uh, that's like three, two, one, so adding weight on each one. Now I'm gonna go back and then try and do more than I did for the first repeat of the same rep. So considering I haven't really lifted anything heavy, apart from the last phase in like two years, it's, it's, it's not too bad. So final set there, 167.5, so nothing fantastic, nothing amazing, not quite two times body weight, which is I think about where I left off two years ago. Um, but yeah, just lack of training, we'll get back there. But how does this relate to flexibility? Well, you want me to talk about it? Yeah, you were just talking. Tell them what you just told me. I think before people start making comparisons, they need to understand that the environments that they're in and the labels they put themselves under hold specific values. So if you're a power lifter and your biggest value is strength, you're in an environment of other people that also value strength, there's not much of an emphasis on flexibility because it's not really needed. So it's quite easy to then disassociate um, strength, and strength, flexibility. strength and flexibility and, and think that they can't work together. But there's enough case studies out there to suggest the opposite, such as gymnastics, etc. You can definitely work towards both but we have to come out of a label mindset uh, and come more into a mixed discipline mindset. Yeah, so gymnastics and also Olympic lifting would be two prime examples. So when it comes to exercise selection for strength and flexibility, obviously we know people have different values, they want to train different things. Do you need a lot of flexibility if you're a power lifter? Do you need some strength if you're just into contortion or lots of flexibility? Yes and no. You need enough to suit the requirements. But there is a middle ground to be had if you want the best of both worlds. The first two drills I've done, sumos, Nordics, very strength biased, minimal amount of flexibility, arguably is some in sumos, but pretty minimal. However, next drill, there's gonna be some flexibility component. And this I've covered in an entire video by itself when I talked about developing strength and flexibility through weight training exercises. Things like Romanian deadlifts, amazing for developing strength and hamstrings and flexibility. Split squats, good mornings like I did in the last weighted leg session in this vlog series. There's so many different options out there. Basically think, what do Olympic lifters do? And then kind of do that. You know, mobility, flexibility is 
an expression of strength through a large range of motion. That's, that's what we're after and that's what we're trying to build. So it's definitely a useful tool. Will it hurt your overall strength development? No, I don't think so. Ultimately, you produce less force towards the end of your range of motion. So if you have a slightly greater range of motion than you need, say for example squatting, if you can go a little bit lower and it's not at your absolute max in terms of range of motion, you're probably gonna be able to apply more force. Better than training for strength and flexibility is kind of just training flexibility. Specificity matters. Ultimately, I think uh, flexibility can just be an addition to your training. It doesn't need to be part of your main session. You can just do it as this modular add-on at the end, which is kind of what I've described in various videos that I've done on this topic. You know, go and just grab any of the follow-alongs I have, any of the routines I have, whatever it is that you're aiming to do, just add it to the end of your strength session. If it's lower body related, I generally do it on lower body days, like these front splits. If it's upper body related, I tend to do it after handstands or upper body training. It's just nice and simple, combining the two, but without having that compromise with strength and flexibility. So uh, that is basically the plan for the moment. Some side goals, some other things to focus on, as well as keeping the main stuff ticking over, all of those handstands, that flexibility, all of the good stuff. Uh, let me know what you are up to, what your current lower limb goals? Are they flexibility based? Are they strength based? Are you trying to do a bit of everything? Do you lift weights? Do you do calisthenics? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you just enjoyed this video, you can always hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. Right next to it is that subscribe button so I can join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe. And finally, if you want to support me, support the work I'm doing here on YouTube, click the link to Patreon. I would highly appreciate it. But that has basically been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and peace.